everybody, we are the Changs. Welcome back. Um, last video, we basically gave you a not so brief introduction to our project here. Uh, but in a nutshell, um, Lena and I found the house and we fell in love with it, put an offer in. Um, and that's basically where we stood last video. So this time... Um, we have some bad news. We hit a couple of roadblocks. Major roadblocks. The first roadblock is that um, remember how we said we had this squatter situation that could potentially be a problem? Well, it's a problem. <laughs> and thankfully we wrote it into our contract that he had to be out of the house. Otherwise, we would be dealing with like a legal, you know, battle trying to get the guy out of the house. The house is haunted and these spirits are following us basically now. So, so let's take you back a couple owners. So basically two owners ago, um, it was an old husband and wife that lived in the house. The wife died. The husband um, was just very depressed apparently and drank himself to death. And you know, during that you know, time period, 10, 15, 20 years, however long it was, the house fell into shambles. Um, so then he um, sold the house to current owners now, even though he's now also gone because it's haunted, like I said. So uh, the current owner, um, now deceased current owner, moved in in the early 80s with 11 other guys that he met in the army. So they were all former military guys. And they had this dream of, you know, all of them working on the house together, fixing it up and living in this big, you know, And they fixed it up. Thing. You know, they had a koi pond in the front of the house. They, they the even built a, deck. yeah, exactly, a Buddhist walk, right, with the, um, the yeah. built integrator as well as, I think it was, it served as a, a platform. That way, to you jump know. jump off the roof after whenever. they had. <laughs> You know, a few drinks. <laughs> we even saw a bunch of parachutes on the lawn. I mean, we wouldn't have known if we didn't see those in the lawn and you know, when so, we asked him. So not so surprisingly, 10 out of 12 of these guys who originally moved in the house are passed away. But I, the surprising part is that none of them died in parachuting accidents at the house, which is, I guess, good news. <laughs> Apparently. So anyway, more bad juju. Um, so there's only two guys remaining. Uh, the original or the, the owner who was living in the house actually died and the occupant is the best friend of the guy. I mean, he's been there for 40 years and he's had all these fond memories. To have to leave the house on what seems to him as such a short notice, you know, it's just, it's just not an easy thing to do. He probably didn't think it was serious. They've been trying to sell the house for a long time. So yeah, years. if you think about you know, the sister saying, hey, we're gonna sell the house. I need you to get oh, out of the here. Sister, but... So the, the guy who died in the house, his sister is essentially managing the estate and she doesn't get along with the resident, mm -hmm. the guy who's living in there now because, you know, she thinks it's his fault that he died. And um, he thinks that it's her fault for abandoning mm -hmm. him. But it is really sad though, because the guy who's living in the house, you know, this is his, you know, it's been his home. It's been the only memory that he has of his best friend. Um, and the other 10 guys who you lived with, 11 guys that are now gone. A real estate agent called us maybe like right before the holidays saying, hey, um, our occupant is moving out. You know, I yeah. think he just wants to do it on his own terms. So hopefully that means he's getting out of there soon. Yeah, um, yeah. Although we do have a extension of the contract in place yeah. until March. So we did have three options. We could either just um, abandon ship, option number one, Option number two, we could try to do this thing called a rent back where we go through with the sale even though we still had a squatter um, and we could basically buy the property and the owner would rent it for a few months paying us you know, monthly rent payments for a specified time. But we had no idea whether this guy was actually gonna move out and when that would be. And then the last option was just to push back closing until the springtime. And we ended up picking the last option. I don't believe in like a white sheep coming through the house going boo, <laughs> but uh, we've all seen things here that we were like, now of course when we were in the rooms that to be, we never told them. Mm -hmm. We let them come to us and, and let them stuff. Out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, because ah. this is actually where I met my wife, and um, one of the girls that was living upstairs came down. We were watching TV and she said, you know, what happened? It is. What's Trisha's problem? Uh, 
What do you mean? She's she's trying to, she said, well, she's walking up the steps to the third floor. She had her hair up. A uh, dress huh? I hadn't seen, right and I just, you know, I said, hey, and then just, you know, what are you guys up to? And she just kept walking. And, steam gives you and we're like, in the air and your skin is just she's not here. She's still, I just talked to her going up the steps. And then the second major roadblock that we hit is, um... This appraisal. My yeah. goodness, who would have thought getting an appraisal would be such a hassle? Uh, we ordered it and even got it done November around... 3rd. Mm -hmm. November 3rd, and we were supposed to close on December 4th. So we had over a month to get it done. We thought there's no way yeah, this was going to be the one that was going to hold us back. The one thing that we paid for. You know, it wasn't right like away. us selling the cars to try to come up with down payment. It wasn't, you know... I don't know, the house burning down or flooding. So even if our guy hadn't, you know, given us a hard time um, leaving the house, this was still would have been an issue, you know? Yeah. We did get another appraisal kind because of started. Because it's still not back yet. We haven't heard anything from this I guy. Think he just like fell off the face of the earth after we paid him and he came and did the appraisal. Hopefully the new appraisal <laughs> comes out in time. Yeah, it'll come out in time. And um, <laughs> our uh, mortgage company basically covered it for now. We don't feel too defeated about these roadblocks because we could definitely use a little bit more time to save for much needed home improvement projects in this Italianate mansion. While we wait for our house buying process to come to an end, we're going to be modeling the floor plan for the main level. We took some measurements of the existing rooms so we can start figuring out the layout of where and how we want to do the existing kitchen layout. The existing kitchen you know, we're probably going to turn it into a mudroom. And it's we already, <laughs> it's a good name for it. It's basically <laughs> sitting in the mud and there's mushrooms growing on the wall if we didn't mention it's, that last It's literally last a mudroom. <laughs> we're probably going to be, you know, continuing our speed renovations that we were doing, paint upstairs. And we fixed a lot of plaster. We mm -hmm. did one complete bathroom renovation downstairs. And then we, the only thing we need to do really is just this upstairs bathroom. The, the, the bathroom. In, inside the house, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We have tiling. It's all, you know, waterproof, ready to go. It just needs tiles and the tub needs to be refinished. Yeah, so we will be doing a video on tiling and refinishing a tub. So keep a lookout for that. I can't guarantee it's going to be good. We still have to make a decision on whether we're going to stay here um upstairs Whether, yeah, or exactly. we're gonna move downstairs in the basement or we're gonna move out of the house altogether and maybe get a rv <laughs> or just like fix up one room at yeah. the other place enough to like live in live there, there. While so we yeah renovate it. So, so we do have a couple of decisions you know we have to you know think about but we still have a couple months yeah before we, we have do a couple that. months um and i think our tentative plan right now is that right now our basement is like uh, guaranteed we could theoretically just rent it out we could continue living upstairs and just pay because our mortgage is covered by the Airbnb and we could just continue to pay the mortgage on the new house and fix it up slowly with the money that we have from our jobs basically and that's kind of what we've done with this house so far um, so option number two is that we you know once we get done fixing the, the upstairs portion of this house is that we rent out the upstairs portion for mm -hmm. more money uh, so it'll cover our rent and instead. give us a little bit more income and we live downstairs. Uh, so that way we would have a nice small space, access to all of our tools, which are currently stored in the storage room in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would just commute back and forth to the house. I think the back. third option is probably going to be the most cost effective, but least um, quality life. of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bedrooms yeah, are fine. Bedrooms you know, it's just, it's just a room. And, and the carpets I, have been steam cleaned. So, you know, maybe it's not so bad. In, so we will move into one of the bedrooms and then um, I guess we'll just have to plug in our instant yeah. pot. Yeah, what else? You know, yeah, just we, camp. We can manage. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah, basically camp, glamping. Um, Except not At least we will have a roof. Glamorous. It's yeah. basically like we have a tent. Yeah. Exactly. You know? So it's not that bad. <laughs> the stars uh, in the middle of December. Well, you know, the thing Cold. is we're not going to get the house until... Pro yeah, so either way, we're probably not going to move out of this house until summertime oh, yeah. yeah i think so at the earliest we're gonna move out of here in maybe like time. april march spring i don't want to no not until school year is over i'm not doing anything she acts like she's <laughs> like going to school has all these things yes i am doing virtual school but still it's school okay i i need she's to have basically internet semi-retired at this point <laughs> yeah that's it funny things that have happened um 
Well, the first funny thing is that uh, we, when we wrote into the contract that we wanted the guy out of the house, you know, before we close on the property, we also wrote that uh, we anything that isn't taken out in that time, like two days before we close, is going to be ours because I don't want to close on the house, move in, and then you know the family's showing up a couple weeks or months later saying, oh. I think that's my artwork. Can I come, you know? So I, I wrote that yeah, in the yeah. But they took it like, they're like, oh crap, we gotta- We gotta start we selling We gotta sell things. all the stuff. So they had an estate sale in the house and literally posted like the refrigerator, the crusty microwave that was in the mud room. And they Freaking don't call it a mud stove. room for nothing. Yeah, like the furnace, they sold the furnace. Like basically anything, and even some things that were nailed down were sold to the house. <laughs> so I, we haven't been back since. Uh, the estate sale. So yeah. I don't know how if the house is even there. Did they sell the windows, uh, door? I don't know. The doors they might have sold because I hope they were they not did. attached. Are the radiators? Because I heard there were like radiators and bathtubs mm. in one of the barns outside. Honestly, I have no and idea. And get this, the best part. So they, they cleaned got out the cleaning house crew coming to then clean. <laughs> <laughs> professionally clean. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense why our our you know guy wouldn't want to leave. It's like now it's nice and clean. You know, I, I'm pretty <laughs> certain that carpet was not salvageable. So I mean, just, I would they love still to wanted see, to steam clean it. Yeah, I would love to see this steam clean job. You know, if it's good, we're gonna... in the state sale, Alden got himself a nice big red tractor. Well, it's kind of red. It's a red belly tractor. <laughs> It's a Ford 2N. I absolutely love it. And apparently, I'm not the only one. There's like a huge cult following. It was like the most popular tractor ever made. You know, so Ford made like a million. Wait, million. wait for a series oh, of yeah. Alden just yeah. working on cursing, the <laughs> cursing at the tractor. There will be a lot is, of that. This is there going be to be a lot, a lot of work. Yeah, and then it's another think... another thing that we want to do is that yeah, I'm going to use the tractor to you know regrade the driveway, mow the lawn. Um, you know, plow the snow when it snows, all kinds of stuff when we use the charge work. I would say best part is probably the photo shoots that you can do around this nice big red tractor. I know. And when yeah. we have kids, they would love to oh, ride on the tractor. Haunted rides? Well, the house shouldn't be haunted anymore. Let's hope No, not. the house is definitely going to be haunted. <laughs> Listen, you will, take, you will say rides. that my mom will never come over. Haunted hay rides. <laughs> Just kidding, you guys edit that out. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but this is gonna be a cool house, babe. No, it's gonna be awesome. I'm very excited. Wanna, you know like, what? Take a weekend and just drive down there and like sit on the roof top there. What if you fly a drone over it? He'll definitely shoot it down. He's already like paranoid as it is. He's gonna think he's like being spied on. So yeah, I got the tractor. It doesn't run. It's gonna need some TLC. I'm excited to fix it. It's gonna be awesome. Well, stay tuned. Um, don't know when our next video will be. It'll probably be house projects because I don't think the house, we're basically just sitting here idling until the springtime when we close. Um, so hang in there. Actually, you know what? When we get the appraisal back, maybe sometime in the next two or three weeks, we'll have an update. It's still very exciting regardless of the roadblocks. <laughs> God knows what's gonna happen. Right now, we've lit some incense, trying to get rid of this juju that's following us.